Welcome back, everybody. If you just joined us at the Americas, your driver up front is in Zane, running all the way at the back is back. We're going to take you on tour of the zoo today. Two rows before we get started. So eating, no drinking, except for water, no smoking, and no standing while we're doing so. On the left hand side, between all of the trees, that are big glass houses, that are green houses here. So all of our plants are grown in this. Our clay collection here at the zoo is actually valued at more than our animal collection. It kind of makes you wonder what they grow in there, but I assure you it is all legal. If you look at any of the pavilions today, the plants in those pavilions are actually made of good geographic locations. So if you're in the African rainforest pavilion, the bush next to it might actually be worth more than the animals in these pictures. On the right hand side, you might be able to see some of our males as well, if you If you didn't see them, don't feel sad. We're going to see a female shortly. Later on, again, the community will get a much closer view of them, and they do know the exact same. You can trust me on that one. But as you take this right hand turn and come along this path, the first animal coming up on our right hand side is going to be our bodily ape. Now their name is a little bit misleading, they're not actually apes, they're monkeys. The way to tell the difference is that an ape has no tail, the monkey has a tail. So these guys, when they were discovered, they thought, hmm, they don't have a tail, let's call them an ape. But then when they researched them a little bit more, they discovered they have a very, very small vestigial tail. So they are, in fact, monkeys. They're more closely related to the macaque type of monkey. They are a little bit difficult to spot. Usually they're sitting in the shade to look along the edges of the enclosure. We have Rocky, Leah, and Blue in this enclosure. Blue is actually a cancer survivor. He's missing one leg, but he is completely cancer free now. He does get it out just fine. He is my boy, my boy Blue. If anyone watches the movie Old School, they get that joke. On the left hand side of the house. These are the bulls. They are an Asiatic wild dog. They look a lot like a North American red fox, but they are a wild dog from Asia. It's spelled E H O L E. They look really, really cute and adorable. Uh, looks like you'd want to bring one home. But these guys are actually very ferocious hunters. They chase off much larger predators like tigers and bears. Anything that can chase away a tiger scares me. As we come around this corner, we are approaching our Yuri's Drive Pool. This is a new portion of the Zoomboy Pool. All the way in operation this year. So if you haven't been to Zoomboy yet this year, this should be all new to you. If you haven't worked with Zoomboy at all in your life, everything's new to you. It's a win-win either way. But as we go through these gates, I'm going to have to remind you to please remain seated and remain in the vehicle at all times. If you have any food, which you shouldn't, because there's no eating on the Zoomboy, just keep it wrapped up and closed. This is the part of the tour that reminds everybody of Jurassic Park. <laughs> no, nobody. If you haven't seen that movie, go home and watch it. That's your homework for today. It's a great movie. I believe it was recently released on in 3D too. So if you're one of those new 3D nuts, you can also enjoy the movie. As we wait for this gate to close, I can start talking about the Breswalski horses, seeing as how they're nice and close. These guys are the only breed of wild horse. They are never, ever domesticated. They are a bit smaller than your average domestic horse because they were never bred for size or strength. They are a bit larger than a pony, though. You might notice that they all look very, very similar in size, shape, and color. It's because at one point back in the 1700s, there was as few as 17 of these guys left in the entire world. There's only 17. They're only alive at zoos. But due to breeding efforts, we actually got their number up over 2,500. They're re released back in the Gobi Desert, so they're no longer extinct in the wild. They're kind of a success story here at the zoo. You're wondering why we split them up into a male and a female herd. It's actually how it works in the wild. One dominant male travels with the males, and one dominant male travels with the females. Whenever the two herds meet up, the two dominant males fight it out. Whoever wins goes with the females, whoever loses goes with the males. That's how it works in the wild, so that's how it works in the zoo. It kind of makes our human dating seem a little bit easier, or harder, depending on how you look at it. Those rare because Walski horses, the equation that we're in right now, will have blue flaws, I believe, later on in the summer. We're still slowly introducing animals to the Eurasian Drive Through. They have to be used to the Zoomville and all these people coming through. If you don't know what a blue flaw is, it's a mountain sheep. They're the ones with the big curved horns that like to wear their heads against each other. You've probably seen them on Planet Earth and National Geographic. If you haven't, go home and Google them. You have lots of homework coming from the Zoomville tour today. You have to watch Jurassic Park and Google blue flaws. We're about to enter into the yak enclosure. 
Jacks are made of Eurasian mountains. They're used by the nomadic tribes there because they carry a large, large amount of weight on their backs. They are incredibly short footed because of their very, very short legs. They can climb up and down steep slopes without slipping or falling. And you may notice that they have really long, shaggy fur that actually allows them to survive temperatures below negative 40 degrees Celsius, which is very, very cold. Their hair actually never ever stops growing, so when they get older they'll actually start to trim over it. We like to trim them and give them haircuts so that they look better for the zoo bill. And so they don't trip over them. I'm not sure if they style it in any particular way. You guys are going to get a really close up view of one of them. As long as he doesn't block the zoo bill. <laughs> We recently had a yak born here, I believe. I don't know if it's out in the enclosure yet. It might still be keeping it with its mother in a different enclosure away from the zoo. Yep. I believe they named it Amy, so we do have a new yak named Amy. The ones in this enclosure right now are Zodi, Hudson, and St. Hubert, or Hubert, if you don't prefer the, the French accent, whichever you like. I like calling them Hubert, just because it sounds funny. Yak are actually the second largest cattle, so we have the largest and the second largest here at the zoo. Now as we wait for this gate to open, we're going to continue on. That was a Eurasia drive through Like I said, we're going to try to get more animals in there throughout the summer. We're also going to try to put in the battery and camels. If you don't know what a battery and camel is, there's a two hump camel. Easy way to remember that. Capital B for battery and has two humps, much like they did. The other types of camels are going to be coming up ahead on our left. These are the dromedary camels. These guys have one hump. These guys are also the camels that give you camel rides up at the front of the zoo. So if you guys have ridden a camel before, or if you're interested in that, you can check that out. It's right next to our dish shop. I guess these guys have the day off here on the left hand side. The common misconception about camels is that they contain water in those humps on their backs. It is in fact fat. They do come from a desert climate, so they have to go long periods of time without eating. That's why they live off those fat stores on their back. It also helps them keep them cool because all the fat goes to those pumps on their back as opposed to building up in different areas along their body, which is actually causing them to overheat in the desert climate. If you heard anyone say that they got spit on by a camel, that's some good news and bad news. The good news is it's not spit, the bad news is it's vomit. They can actually project out vomit. That's why I drive over to the Glasgow floor and see if it's like a practice here. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, ladies. Coming up our head on our left hand side, these are going to be our kids' zoo and show animals. They are featured in the Wildside Zoo Animal Show. I believe it should be running now. I'm not sure if it's open yet for the summer or not. So we have our scooter, our alpaca, both saying the alpaca and sterling are ready for donkey. That scooter right up close, the white alpaca. Looks like you got sheared recently, so it kind of has a goofy haircut. If you're wondering why we keep an alpaca and a donkey together, they're actually the best of friends. They literally are always hanging out together. I don't think I've ever seen them separated. Coming up on the left hand the way, this is the new panda area. On the left is the panda orientation center. You walk through that tent before coming into the panda experience center, which is on the right. We have two pandas, Urshan and Dave Mao. Urshan means double smooth. Not sure why it means that, but I thought it was funny, so I like mentioning it in my commentary. Oh, you can actually see one. Just sitting under the little logs there, munching on some bamboo. That's all pandas do is eat bamboo. That's literally all they do. here for five years, so if you're going to get a chance to check them out today or if it's too busy, you have five years to see the pandas, so don't worry, they're not going anywhere, but on the left hand side, this is a splash bag, great way to cool down on a hot summer day, it's not too hot today, and it is only open on weekends until the dry long weekend, so there is no cool here, so if you can't do it, it's not a big deal, you can wear whatever you want, you can wear a business, business suit or a bathing suit, as long as you're wearing something, no birthday suit to have, we're just waiting for some people to cross the road here. Our driver's such a nice guy, he's going to let the pedestrians cross. <laughs> Good guy, Dan. <laughs> We're now entering here the Coral Lake, which is actually the central portion of the Toronto Zoo, which is where all the pavilions are based around. Straight ahead of the zoo, we're right about now. That's Africa. Behind that's Canada. To our left is the parking lot and the main entrance. Behind us is America, America's the Tundra Trek. So we are actually in the central portion of the zoo right now. The all-natural mature maple forest. 
We need the trees to be decomposed in their natural state to provide nutrients to the new existing trees. There might be animals in here like squirrels, chipmunks, raccoons, deer, coyote, maybe even a sasquatch. You never know. We also have little pools in those forests on the left and right hand side coming up. These are programs started by the Charlotte Zoo to aid in the breeding of frogs and other amphibians. The amphibian population has actually been approaching its first mass extinction since the dinosaurs were able to prevent that. As we come around this corner, it always tells me we are coming up to our final stop on the tour, which is our main station stop. There's also a stop for Indomalaya, so if you guys want to check out the articulated python orangutan, or the Sumatra tigers, which are very cool, I highly suggest you guys go and check them out. They're just over the bridge that we're about to go under right now. On the after driving myself, we hope you enjoyed the ride on the video today. We hope you join us again sometime. Lastly, please remain seated until we come to a four and complete stop. Exit on your left hand side only. The right hand side is the service road, so others do vehicles may pass us. So exit on your left hand side only. Please remain seated until we come to a four and complete stop. Exit on your left hand side only. The right hand side is the service road, so others do vehicles may pass us. So exit on your left hand side only. Enjoy the rest of your day.